Welcome to the Tribal Courts Assistance Program, Indian Alcohol and Substance Abuse Prevention Program Training. I'm going to refer to it as TCAP ISEP for the duration of the presentation. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to learn more about your program's performance measures and how to report them in the PMT system. Here are the agenda for today's training. We will review the importance of performance measures and how to report them in the Performance Measurement Tool, or PMT. We will go over the questionnaire structure, cover common reporting challenges, and discuss frequently asked questions. There will be an option for live Q&A at the conclusion of the presentation. At the end of this training, you should walk away with a better understanding of why BJA requires you to report performance measures and how we use this information. During the training, you'll get an in-depth review of your program-specific reporting and some issues we often see in reporting. So let's get started. This section of the training will provide an overview of performance measures and the reporting process. So what exactly is the PMT? The Performance Measurement Tool is an online data collection tool for the Office of Justice Programs grant recipients. It is structured as an online questionnaire and is available year round. The PMT contains lots of information and tools to assist you in your reporting. Let's take a look. This table outlines the type of data you'll be reporting each reporting period, when your reports are due in the PMT, and whether you also need to upload your reports to GMS. As you can see from the alternating values under the second column, you'll only report on the narrative questions in January, July, and during your last reporting period of grant activity, regardless of where that falls on the schedule. As you can see, the PMT is only open for data entry during the month after a reporting period closes. The PMT is accessible year round for you to review and edit your data, generate reports and more, but you will need to contact the PMT help desk to help you unlock reports as needed. The first page of each performance measure questionnaire outlines additional resources that may be helpful as you report. It includes reminders about the program's goals and objectives and lists contact information for the PMT help desk and state policy advisors if you need to reach out with any questions. We like to know each program's goals and objectives as a reminder of why we are asking you to fill out this questionnaire each quarter. The measures are ultimately there to assess your progress toward your program's goals. We also have a reporting tip on this slide. Each reporting tip may appear throughout the presentation where we think there is additional information that can help clarify PMT reporting. This one highlights that some grantees find it easier to track the required data outside of the PMT in smaller time increments, maybe by week or month, and then add it all together when it's time to report in the PMT to get the reporting period totals. We strongly encourage you to use whatever approach makes it easiest for you to report your totals for each reporting period. This graphic introduces the variety of types of performance measures we use to track progress towards PCAP ISAP goals and identify areas for improvement. Inputs refer to program resources. Examples include grant funding, like where we ask about your program's funding allocations by program activities, and personnel, which we get through a variety of questions about cross-sector partners and community participation. Activities are the actions that convert inputs to outputs that eventually result in measurable progress towards the program's goal. These can include things like trainings, meetings, partnership development, data analysis, and strategic planning. Outputs are the countable products or services that result from these actions. Outcomes speak to longer term program goals. Associated outcomes can be found in the outcome section at the end of the performance measure questionnaire. With all that in mind, let's take a look at the goals of the TCAP ISAP program as defined in the fiscal year 2019 solicitation. I've highlighted a few key components of the goal statement here, which you can read on your own. Performance measurement ben benefits both BJA and its grantees. This slide focuses on performance measures 
uses and advantages for BJA, which uses this information to identify areas of success and potential opportunities for improvement, to, to track grant progress toward program goals, understand how funds are distributed, and to comply with the Government Performance and Result Modernization Act. Grantees can, can use performance measures to accomplish many of the same goals, like identifying areas for improvement to focus internal effort, proactively request assistance to address challenges, and develop evidence of program process that can be used to enhance advocacy and sustainability. Let's have a quick review to check what you've learned so far. Please take a minute to respond to these questions on the right side of your screen. Don't forget to hit submit after you've entered your answers. The answer to number one is C. The answer to number two is D. Now let's get into the functions of the performance measurement tool. The TCAP ISAP performance measures questionnaire is structured with three different types of questions, multiple choice, multiple response, and open text. Multiple choice questions allow grantees to select the response that best reflects their project's activity. With multiple response questions, grantees can see all responses that reflect their activity. Open text questions enable grantees to enter both text and numbers to provide contextual responses when appropriate. There are three main functions of the questionnaire, baseline, carry forward, and skip flow. Baseline questions collect information on activity before your grant becomes operational to enable pre and post grant comparisons. Carry forward questions reduce reporting burden by not requiring you to enter, but allowing you to update responses to questions where information is likely to remain stable. Skip flow questions reduce reporting burden by allowing you to skip sets of questions that are not applicable to your project. As mentioned in the earlier part of this training, the questions in the PMT are made up of two main categories. The first is the quantitative program performance measures. This is where you enter the numeric data you collect over the course of the reporting period. For example, how many dollars were spent on law enforcement equipment during this reporting period? The second section are the qualitative narrative questions. These questions are open-ended and do not require a numeric response. The narrative questions that are answered during the April to June and October to December reporting periods fall into this category. An example of this type of question could be, what type of equipment was purchased with BJA funding during this reporting period? Remember, these questions are meant to capture the full experience you have with conducting activities with BJA funds. So the more information you provide, the better. The quantitative data you report is used to establish baselines, track performance against program goals, and create a nationwide picture of numeric data for BJA. Narrative questions are open-ended and give grantees a chance to express in their own words how their experience has been conducting program activities with BJA funding. Both of these categories are equally important for your reporting, and you should take every possible measure to ensure the accuracy and integrity of your data. This next section will review common reporting challenges. To introduce this section, we'd like to share some information about how BJA identifies common challenges and seeks to improve data quality. BJA's planning, performance, and impact team assesses data consistency and accuracy and reaches out to grantees with potential issues. Program grant managers also play a role in enhancing performance data quality through site visits, where they identify documentation to verify PMT data entries for major activities. Grantees are required to provide a response to all mandatory measures. However, if a mandatory measure does not apply to the activities funded by your award, 
We ask that you enter zero and then provide an explanation in the additional comments section once your report is complete. Upon view viewing your complete report, you can select the blue Add Comments box. This will allow you to submit additional comments to explain why you are not able to provide data. A brief description such as, we are still in our planning period, or there was no activity during the reporting period are sufficient responses. This information improves data quality by helping us understand the meaning of zeros reported in the system. Many of the questions in TCAP ISAP's performance measure questionnaire are related. During the data verification process, analysts examine related questions to ensure sites are reporting consistently. Here's an example from the Alcohol and Substance Abuse Prevention and Education section. If you report completing community-based alcohol and substance abuse prevention activities, you should also report the populations targeted to benefit from alcohol and substance abuse prevention in the next question. Some questions include embedded relationships, where one part of a question may be a subset of another. Question 99 is one example. It asks for the number of healing to wellness court or drug court program participants who were tested for the presence of alcohol or other substances. The number reported in question 100 should not be larger than the number reported in question 99 because it is a subgroup. To wrap up, we'd like to quickly review common challenges with defining goals and objectives and offer a few tips. It is important to write well-defined goals and objectives to clarify your priorities and highlight criteria for success. The, the SMART mnemonic walks users through important dimensions of a good goal or objective. They should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. We recommend that you reevaluate your goals twice a year to determine whether they should be updated and use data to drive this process. Here are a few examples of how you can create strong goals. For our final review, please answer the two polling questions to the right of your screen before we move on to the Q&A portion of this training. The answer to number one is B. The answer to number two is D. Finally, we'll go over frequently asked questions. Here are some helpful hints. If you get an error message, follow the prompt to correct any errors or discrepancies. Then click the Federal Awards page and review the data entry status and report status column to make sure you have completed data entry. What if you lost data? PMT will time out after 30 minutes of inactivity. To avoid re-entering data, click the Save button before leaving, leaving the system or when you are finished entering data. On the data entry page, each measure and question Underlined in blue is a link to more information. Click on or hover over the links throughout the page for definitions and instructions. If your report is locked, contact the PMT Help Desk to request that the report be unlocked so you can edit submitted data. It's crucial for PMT users to make sure the profile page has correct and complete contact information. Please update information in the grants management system first and then update it in PMT. Red buttons are used as indicators to the action required on that page. Select the red buttons throughout the page and it will complete the task at hand or take you to the next step. Here's the BJA PMT Help Desk contact information. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, except for U.S. federal holidays. We strive to return everybody's email and phone call within 24 hours, so 
so please don't hesitate to leave a voicemail or email, even after business hours. We'll leave the webinar open for about five to 10 minutes so you can download any handouts attached or use the Q&A box if you have any questions. A recording of today's training and other user materials and resources will be posted online. On behalf of BJA and the PMT team, thank you for your time, dedication, and hard work. This concludes the presentation.